Hallelujah. It's Father's Day. I ain't talking about me being a father. I'm talking about the good father. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, God, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Into temptation. Say, lead us not. Hallelujah. Lead us not. That's what happens when people abandon you. You get led astray. Hallelujah. But Jesus asked the Father, he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Somebody say forever. Now put an amen on it. That means I agree. Do you agree today? Come on, that's the words of Jesus coming from Matthew chapter 6 when he was teaching us how to pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, teach us. Oh, my God. Teach us how to pray. Hallelujah. That's not the message today, but boy, it's in my spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I just feel like praising him. Ah, oh, glory. Hallelujah. And when I say I feel like praising him, I don't mean just getting up and running all around the church. I'm talking about with lifted hands and an open mouth telling God, thank you. Lord, I 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 thank you. Hallelujah. Why do I thank him? Because it could have been me. I said it could have been me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we've been in some dangerous situations. But because of the grace of God, come on, somebody, and the plan that God, the perfect plan that God has for you, Hallelujah. Oh, God blocked it. Mm. Somebody say, God blocked it. Oh, don't fool yourself. Don't you fool yourself. Thinking that you got out by the skin of your... Come on, somebody. God blocked that thing. Somebody say, God blocked that thing. Hallelujah. Accidents try to take my son's life. Come on, somebody. God, die. God blocked that thing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. God. Jesus, Jesus, God, he blocked that thing. You better think about it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You better think about it.
your hope for the rest of your life. But God, block that thing. Hallelujah. He ain't trying to hurt you. Devil ain't trying to hurt you. Trying to kill you and sift you as wheat. But God, come on somebody. Oh, he blocked that thing. Thank you, Lord. Thought he had me hooked for the rest of my life. But God, somebody say, but God. Oh, he blocked that thing. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Songwriter said, I've got something. Woo, Jesus. I've got something to thank God for. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Oh, God. I praise him. I praise him today. I come full. I come full of the glory of God. I was having a short discussion. Y'all know I always talking about my brother, but I had a short discussion with my brother this morning. He said, you know, people should be ready to come to church on Sunday. Amen. They come just empty. You know, just come empty. I said, no, it's the opposite. It should come full. Don't come here empty. Don't come here empty. You should come full and ready to go. Ready to praise him. He didn't tell us to enter in his gates with a hung head. He said, enter with thanksgiving. I'm full because I know what he's done for me. Hallelujah. I said I'm full today. I'm full because I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. That's why I come full. You shouldn't come here empty. You know when you come empty? When you're not praying all week long. You come empty when you're not reading your word. It don't cost you $5 a gallon. It costs you some time. Hallelujah! But you better fill up on a daily basis. Don't allow yourself to go to empty. Don't let your needle go all the way down to E. The more you spend, the more it takes to fill up. Come on, somebody. I try not to let my tank go past half empty. really do. I try not to. Because instead of spending $60, 70 and $80, I can fill up with just 30 35 not 40 somewhere around there in this current market. But listen, you got to stay full of God. Because when there's an empty space, come on somebody, the devil will try to creep in and steal your gas. Tell somebody, you can't have my gas. Come on, I run on the word of God. Do you understand that your fuel, come on, the fuel to your fire is the word of God. You got to keep full. Hallelujah, don't waste your gas. Hallelujah. When I go to the gas station, let me tell you something. When I'm filling up and it cuts off, amen, I, I take that line and I turn it upside down and I try to get every trickle. Everything. I, I, be, I be squeezing that thing. Stroke. Come on. Turn that thing upside down. Try. I be tapping that tank. I want every drop. I, if I get mad if some, if I see a gas stain fell from my, that's how we have to be with the word of God. Get at it, get it all. 
Come on, come on, get everything that belongs to you. I don't want to miss a drop. I don't want to miss a drop of the word of God. But it's, it sustains me. It keeps me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, one more time. Can we just give him a praise really quickly? My God, my God, my God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Woo, Lord. We're going to be coming from Mark chapter 3 today. Ushers, you can be seated at this time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father's Day. Amen. We're preaching to everybody today, amen. But I do want to recognize the fathers today, amen, that are here in this house, amen. And even to those who have gone on into eternity that did their job, amen. amen. Hallelujah. But, you know, the Bible tells us, I was thinking about this this morning. He said, honor your father and your mother that your days would be long on the earth. He didn't say honor them conditionally. Hello, somebody. He just said honor them. Amen. And some of us, we have issues with honoring fathers, our fathers, our baby's daddies. Hello, somebody. Amen. But I know y'all say, well, it said give honor to whom honor is due and they ain't due. Hallelujah. But we have to honor, right? We have to honor. So today we're here to honor fathers. Amen. It's always, you know, Mother's Day is always a joyous, happy occasion. Father, they're like, yeah, whatever. But I do honor the fathers today. Amen. I thank God for my children who have uh, 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 just been a blessing to me, amen, and to my wife, amen, who saw me fit to be the father of her children, amen. She found me fit at some point. Amen, but I just thank God that we're still here together, raising our children together, amen. And I thank God for the people of the church. Amen. The saints in this house, Citadel of Hope Mission, amen, that have, you know, granted me the opportunity to shepherd over this house, amen, with God being the head, amen, amen. I, I, I tell you, I'm grateful, amen, for each and every one of you, amen, and I love you with the love of God. You mean so much to me. My, my phone is just about dead because of the Vibrations, I got it on vibrating. Everybody's wishing me happy Father's Day. Amen. I promise I'll return the, the message. Amen. Later on. Amen. But we're going to get into the word of God. Amen. Before I go further, I want to say happy birthday to my wife. Yeah. Yeah. She was born on Father's Day. Over 50-something years ago. I said 50-something, y'all. But it's closer to 60 than it is to 50. Amen. But boy, is she looking good. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Thank God for taking us. We went on and took a short vacation, so I'm a little tan than I usually am. Amen. I looked in the mirror this morning. My head was peeling. I said, honey, I, my head is peeling. She put some lotion. I don't like the way that lotion smells. I sweat to get in my eyes. Be burning me. Amen. Amen. But I just thank God, amen, for her and for the love that she just gives to me. Amen. I just pray the blessings of God over her life. 
Amen. But we're going to get into the word of God. We're coming from Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Amen. And uh, we're going to start at the first verse. Lord, bless your word on this morning. Open up the ears and the hearts of the people that they may hear, understand, and then apply this word to their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. And the Bible says, amen, let's make it big because I forgot my glasses in my office, but that's all right. I got spiritual sight. Amen. Anybody got some glasses? No, I'm kidding. It says here, and he entered again into the synagogue. Think about it. And there was a man there with a withered hand. He didn't say that he met him out on the street, but he came into the place of worship, into the so-called church, where this man had this withered hand. And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man with which had the withered hand, he said, Stand forth. That means come here. Come up front where everybody can see you. Hallelujah. God was not looking to do this thing in secret. Amen. But he was going to do this miracle openly. And this was not just about performing the miracle, but this was about changing minds from the law to grace. Hallelujah. Showing them that he has come not to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. Hallelujah. He told this man, he said, stand forth, which means come forth. And he said unto them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day? Or to do evil? To save life or to kill, but they held their peace. They held their peace. They knew why, why, why they were there. They were there to try to entrap Jesus to find a reason to put him to death. But tell your neighbor, he already had a reason. And that reason was me. Come on, somebody. He already had a reason to die. That reason was us, but they didn't know. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus was going to give them all the evidence that they needed. Because he was going to go against everything, come on, that they believed in order to get to the cross to die for us. But today, amen, I, 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 I want to talk about this man with the withered hand. Hallelujah. This man with the withered hand. I think about what we use our hands for. Amen. Especially as fathers, what we use our hands for. We put our hands to work to be able to supply for our families. Amen. We, 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 we put our, we use our hands for so many different things. Amen. It's not just to work, but also to caress. It's also used to hold. Come on, somebody. And to give comfort. It's also there to do battle. Come on, when we need to battle. Come on now. Y'all heard about putting up your dukes. Even though t today's dukes has got something in the hand. Come on now. It used to be just a fist fight. Now you got to run. Run and duck. To fight another day. But our hands, amen, so it, it shows, amen, that, it, you know, this withered hand syndrome is, is more than just having something deformed. This withered hand caused this man not to be able to do the task that he needed to do to the best of his ability. 
And I think about fathers today that a lot of times in our situations and the way that life has evolved for us as fathers, we are dealing with a withered hand in the relationships as fathers, even as mothers, as brothers. Come on, y'all. We are dealing with the withered hand, not being there to do all that the hands are capable of doing. Some of us have, ha have, have conquered uh, 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 the, the correction side of what the hand can do. Some of us have, have, have really uh, uh, got a hold on what, what the hand can do as far as supplying and working. But we miss out on all of what the hands are meant to do. We miss out on the love that you can get from hands. We miss out from just, you know, being able to caress, being able to hold, being able to feel, being able to make somebody feel protected. The job of the father is not to be just the disciplinarian. Hello, somebody. When is the last time your son kissed you? Hello, somebody. I'm talking about having that type of relationship to where you will fulfill all that the hands are supposed to do. Instead of just going upside the head, come on somebody. When you do those things and that's all you give them, every time you go upside your head, your, your, their head, your hand is becoming a little more withered. Because you're not getting your hand in their lives. To where you're not only able to discipline, but to also show them love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to listen to somebody that every time I come into contact with you, all I get is discipline. There has to be a balance. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm sure my children all have a memory. They could all tell you of at least one or two times. I'm sure it's many more than that. Amen. Because my children were just like me. So I know what it took for me to get here. I told y'all last week or no, two weeks ago, amen, that your children are just like you. Apple don't fall far from the tree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here, amen, we find a man, and I, I, I know I'm using my art, artistic skills here, amen, but with this withered hand, a lot of us grew up with fathers with the withered hand syndrome. They didn't give us what we needed. Hallelujah. They didn't even give us what we wanted. Some of us, we didn't even see them to give what we wanted or what we needed. Come on, somebody. So even them coming into your life at a later age, they already came in with that withered hand. There was nothing that they could do to make up for that time that was lost. They left you to the wind. Come on, somebody. They cause mom, come on, to make up for their withered syndrome. That's not all the case. Some, 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 some had fathers, amen, I know my father was good to us. He gave us what we needed and some of what we wanted. Amen, so I'm not saying, listen y'all, I'm not here to jump on father's cases. Some are doing their job. But to those of us who are not 
doing it. I'm telling you that you need God's grace. Because he will take your withered situations and make you whole. Do you believe that today? Amen. It says here in the fifth verse, it says here, and when he had looked round about on them with anger, this is God now. He said, being grieved for their hardness in their hearts, their willingness not to break away from what they believed is right. Hallelujah. God don't care about what you think. He cares about what's right. Hallelujah. Some of us can think, well, they don't deserve forgiveness. They don't deserve this and they don't deserve that. But it's not about what you think. It's about what's right. Hallelujah. And here these men saw that this man was in need of a healing. Not only was the situation very present and, 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 and something that they could plainly see, but the answer was there. The healer was there. Yet they wanted to prevent this man his healing because of what they believed. Hallelujah. Some of us are holding fathers, baby daddies, hostage. Come on, somebody. Because of what we believe. Come on, y'all. God told us in that same chapter, Matthew chapter 6. I didn't know why I repeated it when I did, but now I know. God told us to forgive, come on now, forgive so that we could be forgiven. Hallelujah. He didn't say if they turn around, if they start paying child support. Come on, somebody. I know they no good. You know they no good. But you can't let them get to the level of your heart and the level of your forgiveness. The Bible says you can be mad and sin not. So go ahead and be mad in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying don't hold their feet to the fire. I'm not saying don't do and, 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 and tell them what they're supposed to do, even though they should know. Hallelujah. But don't allow other people to cause you to fall out of favor with God. Do you understand that your unforgiveness can cause you, not them, but you to fall out of favor with God? You go around here upset, cussing, telling your children how no good daddy is and daddy out there just doing his thing. Hey, he don't care about what you said. Come on now, he ain't care about what you said before you had him. Well, sure don't care now. But I believe that all children come from God. I believe that. I believe that. You could holler at me all you say. Well, you ain't met my son. <laughs> Hallelujah. All children. I don't care how messed up they are. And God knows because we are people's ch We are somebody's child. So I ain't telling you to start uh, 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 sizing up somebody. Look at yourself. Think about what it took to get you to where you are. It took the grace of God and the mercies of God that goes from generation to, come on, we need a generational blessing here. We need miracles. But we understand that we have many, 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 many men 
and it's not designated to a certain race. I know they like to get on black fathers. I know they do. I know they do. But let me tell you something. This thing is an epidemic in every race. Come on now. It is. It is. Even in myself. And I had an example. Do you understand that we have men today that are growing up with no examples of how to be a father? Hello, somebody? None. None. They never had one. Didn't even have a grandfather to look up to. Nobody. And children don't come with instruction. They don't know how to love a woman. They don't know what making love is. Hallelujah. Especially if they're looking at television. Come on, y'all. We have to be careful of what we expose our children to. I don't want them looking at these things in my house. No. Turn that stuff off. And my children are grown. But it's still my house. And I pay the cable bill. Hello? But the thing is, is that we look and they have 20 different men trying to win the heart of one woman. Come on, what is it? Bachelorette and bachelor and married for what? 60 days? I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Is this the example? How many taste tests do you need before you find the one that you like? Hello, somebody? And you can't taste test everything in one week. But this is what we are pushing our children toward. Hallelujah. Married to somebody in prison. Y'all seen that one? Oh, God. This is what? And our daughters, come on now, when the father is not there, they don't know how they're supposed to be treated. They don't know what love looks like. As I said a few weeks ago, fathers are their daughter's first boyfriend. Hello, somebody? Fathers are their daughter's first boyfriend. You take them out on their first date. Come on, somebody. You take them out to dinner. You spoil them. You buy them their first piece of jewelry. You buy them shoes. You buy them clothes. You're the one who is supposed to be supplying. That's why these jokers come. And they think because they can buy them a... Cheap, come on somebody, a cheap meal. Know what I'm saying? My daughter would come up to me and say, Dad, they thought I was going to be impressed with Red Light. We go there on Tuesday. Are you kidding me? Because you got something you don't even know how to order. You order in scripts. Are you kidding? I mean, they don't need, come on now. It's shrimp. It's lobster. That ain't no big deal. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about the withered hand syndrome is a generational thing. So what you do, come on now, it not only hinders you, but it hinders the generations that come after you. Hallelujah. And we cannot allow ourselves to be in the position to where our hands have lost its power to influence our children. They should never see your hands 
put on their mother, come on now, except to give her a hug. Come on, somebody. You ain't big and bad because you can slap your wife around. Come on now. That's not the job of a father. You should never get that angry. And when you do, learn how to walk away. But this withered hand syndrome has gotten into our community as such a stronghold that it's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost to destroy, not break, but to destroy this yoke of bondage. It's causing our sons to act like idiots. It's causing our daughters, come on y'all, to expose themselves. And it's all because of the missing hand of the parent. It is. It's the missing hands of the parent. And allowing another hand to do what we were supposed to do. Which is the government. Government will come and pay your rent. Give you your food. Hello? Hello? give you med medical coverage. These are the job of the father. Hello? But we done got so slick, we don't even want to get married no more because we want to hold on to the government benefits and still keep the man. Come on now, come on now. Don't y'all look at me like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, he's my boo. He ain't your boo. Hallelujah. But this is what we have come, lowered ourselves to these standards. What are your children seeing? Come on now. What are your children? What example? How are you causing yourself injuries? You're causing yourself to be injured. Come on, in the eyes of your children, in the eyes, come on now, of people who are looking at you. Ain't nobody else do it to you. You're doing it to yourself. Withering your hands, withering your influence in the lives of the people. Going by what people say and what people think. Let me tell you something. When you get God on the inside, he will break all the rules. Come on, he'll break all that fallow ground that's in your mind. Thinking that you need something that you don't. Come on, because God becomes your supplier. And who he has for you, he'll put together with you. And you'll become one. And you'll become a living example of what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. So when we introduce God into our situation, come on, when Jesus shows up on the scene, then verse 5 happens. The Bible says, and when he had looked round about on them, with anger being grieved for their hardness of hearts, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. Somebody said, I'm reaching out to you, Lord. He said, stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched it out. And his hand was restored whole. Somebody say whole. I said whole. God wants to make us whole. Even though you messed up and you were no good. Come on, somebody. God wants to restore your relationship and make you whole. Make you whole as a man. Make you whole as a father. Come on, somebody. He wants to make you whole. Because he needs you to be a living example. 
of what God purposed you to be. More than a donor. Come on, somebody. I'm more than a donor. Come on, somebody. God wants us to be fathers. And we're supposed to be fathers like him. And he's a good father. I said he's a good, good father. Hallelujah. He taught us how to be men. He taught us how to be fathers. He taught us how to be husbands. He said that we're supposed to love our wives as Christ loves the church. And he ain't talking about this address. Somebody say, I am the church. So if you can't love me like God loves me, you need to get the step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves me. Hallelujah. And it's his love towards me that calls me to love him back. I mean, it's just undeniable. I have to because I take time to look at the goodness. Oh, when somebody's that good, come on, you can't walk away. Come on, God spoils you. He wakes you up every morning. Come on, in your right, uh, in your right mind, in your right mind. With a mind, come on, somebody. With a right mind. Hallelujah. Then the old mothers will say, with blood running warm in my veins. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. When they get real good and down into that thing. I got blood. Right, Mother Hill? Running warm in my veins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. There's a song that says, in my veins, in my veins, in my veins, in my veins, while the blood's running warm, in my veins. <laughs> Y'all know that one? In my veins, in my veins, in my veins, in my veins, while the blood's running warm, in my veins. That means I'm going to praise him while I got the blood. Come on, running warm. In my veins, because he's that good. Come on, y'all. He's that good. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. But that withered hand syndrome, saints of God, that causes us to fall out of favor with our children, with our family, with our wives, come on, with our sons and daughters. God is saying, stretch your hand towards me. And I will make you whole. Some of us, I know you've been trying to get back on the scene. And you just don't know how to do it. Oh, man, it's tough. When you want that relationship back. Come on, when you want that forgiveness. That's not old, hello, somebody. According to man's way. But we owe. We owe forgiveness. According to the word of God. We owe honor. According to the word of God. So stop thinking with your earthly mentality. Set your affections on things above. Hallelujah. Get a word from God. That will cause you. Because he only going to do is say. Listen you up here complaining. But I've had you all these years. Come on, you still good? You still good? You got a roof over your head? Come on now. Did you really need them? And I'm not saying that you don't need men. You do need them. Because it would have made your life a whole lot easier. If they do the job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife used to say to me, I pray for you. I said, well, let the Lord answer. Let me do it. Let go to the rest. But it's hard. 
I understand. I've seen it with single parents. Amen. Single mothers that got to do everything. But when God sends you a good man, come on, y'all. Like you've been wanting to let go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. When God sends you a, a, a godly man, I ain't say a good looking man. Hello? Good looking is a bonus. That's why my wife is so blessed. She got it all. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord, help me. We do, though, men, we have to stretch forth our hand so that God can. He didn't say you're healed. He didn't say you're healed. He said you're whole. He wants to restore you and make you whole. And that's what we're missing out on today. The wholeness of the family. Come on, the wholeness of the family. God wants to heal you everywhere. You're, when you're healed everywhere, that's when you're whole. Come on, no suffering, no lack, no pain. Come on now. That's when you're whole. That's when you're ready to do what you're supposed to do. God wants to make you whole. Do you believe that today? Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thought I was going to get into the lower verses talking about that strong man. Talking about that strong man. You get down there into the 23rd and 24th verse. You go ahead and read it. Take it home and read it. Amen. But what he's telling us, amen, is that the enemy has his thing together, y'all. Amen. He does. He had because they were trying to accuse Jesus of. Casting out devils by the devil. He said, how can Satan cast out Satan? Come on, y'all. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Thank you, Jesus. He was saying a, ho a, 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 a house that's divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. I know he was talking about Satan's kingdom here, but it also goes for us. When we have division in our homes, it won't stand. I hate to see divorce. Hallelujah. I'm against divorce. I see sometimes why it needs to happen. I always say, if you would have came to marriage counseling before you did it, it probably could have helped you. And when you come to church on a daily basis, Amen. And get the word as you're getting right now. It'll keep you from arguments. It'll keep you out of strife. It'll keep your home whole when you're both serving God. But they always come in crisis. They always come in crisis when somebody has already, when they say, okay, I'll go to counseling. It's been pretty much over. They just hanging on to the last thread. They just want to complete this last thing so that they can make a clean break. I ain't talking about just the man. Sometimes it's the woman. Hello, somebody? My wife used to say, go ahead and cheat if you want to. All you're going to do is switch these problems for another set of problems. So you might as well stay with the problem that you know. Hello, somebody. And then my problems didn't look so bad after a while. Come on now. Hallelujah. That's right. In my case, it is cheaper to keep her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hey, I feel like shouting on that one. Because I'm glad that we're together. I'm glad to be an example of wholeness. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying this to make people jealous. I'm saying this, amen, to broaden your horizon to say, 
I need that to happen for me and not to settle for less. Hallelujah. It ain't been a bed of roses throughout these 28 years now. Hallelujah. Yeah, we had some arguments. Hallelujah. They say, oh, let the sun go down. Let me tell you, the sun went down, came back up. Hallelujah. Oh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, please. Hallelujah. That thing done went around the equator a couple times. But God, who is rich in mercy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I've learned to sing my way out. Father, I stretch my hands to, to Thee. No other help I know if I Stretch your hand to him and say, Father, I stretch my hands to, to thee. No. from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for this word on today. Father, we believe, oh God, that today you want to make us whole. I believe in wholeness, not just healing. Some of us, oh God, we're satisfied with physical healings, oh God, but you want to heal us from the inside out. Come on, from the inside out. From the broken heart, come on, from the disappointed uh, 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 life. Hallelujah. God, you want to make us whole. That's why we have to stretch our hand to you. Because there is no other help. There is no other strength. There is no other power that can cause us to forgive. Help us to realize, oh God, many of us are suffering with illnesses because of unforgiveness. Come on, we're dealing with this high blood pressure. Come on, because of unforgiveness, God. We're dealing with so many different things. Because of unforgiveness, things we cannot let go. But God, you said that you would give us a newness of life, yes. God, you said that you would restore unto us, come on, everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten up. Some of us, oh God, we feel like, oh God, all of our past have been eaten up. Oh, by the devil, oh God, we feel like there's nothing good to look back on. But God, I said, if they can't find anything looking back, give us the power to look forward. Come on forward to what you're going to do. Forward to what you're going to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. We have a reason and a right to give you praise. We have a reason and a right to give you glory. For to rekindle relationships today. 
Give them the power to say, forgive me. I'm going to say it again. Give the fathers the power and the mind to be able to say, forgive me. In the name of Jesus. Help us to realize that we are the adults in the situation. <laughs> we are the adults in the situation. We have to take responsibility for the mistakes that we have made. But God, I'm asking you right now, oh God, Holy Ghost, go before us. Prepare the hearts of our children. Prepare the hearts of the mothers who have been hurt. Prepare the hearts, oh God, of those who have been disappointed by our actions. Or better yet, by our inactions. In the name of Jesus. We need you, Lord. We can't do it by ourselves. Man never wants to forgive. God, we know, oh God, that according to your word, when we come to you, it's something that we must do in order to be in your perfect will and in your favor. We thank you right now, and we count these things done. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, we say amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask every father, come on, to stand up right now. Come on, every father. I want to pray for you right now. You may be online right now. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to lift your hands as high as you can. Because I believe that today God is saying, I need you to stretch your hands. Come on, I need you to stretch your hands to me. Come on, stretch them out, stretch them out. Holly, I need you women to be quiet. Hallelujah. Come on, Father, stretch them out to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to heal you from your withered hand syndrome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you right now to let your glory Rest upon these fathers here today in the name of Jesus. Father, these fathers in here today, so many, they, they represent broken relationships. They represent wrong terms in their lives, oh God. But Father, we know that you're a God that will restore. And today, God, we're asking you for your restoration power right now in Jesus' name. God, we admit today the mistakes that we have made. But God, we're coming to you and we're asking you for restoration in the name of Jesus. Show us when and how to do it. Show us, God. We need to see it. We need your glory. We need your glory. We need the Holy Ghost to act on our behalf. Because we can't do it on our own. But God, we thank you for the mind of Christ that is in us right now. Hallelujah. That has called us to be able to turn around from the things that we have done in our past. And God, we ask you right now, oh God, that you cause us to be trailblazers today of repair and wholeness in every area of our lives. And we're going to be so careful to praise you. Come on, praise him. Come on and give you glory in Jesus' name. Do I have any support from my women in here today? Come on, can you give God praise right now? Come on and help these men. Come on, give restoration in their lives. Come on, come on, give them restoration in their lives. In the name of Jesus. We count it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, all God's people, say amen, amen and amen. And I pray that for your husbands that are home today. Amen. Maybe some of you, your husbands are home. 
whatever your dynamics may be at this time, amen, I pray that over your male factors. I pray that prayer over your fathers. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And I thank God for the fathers, amen, again, who did their job, amen, and have gone on to be with the Lord. Amen. amen. Come on, let's give fathers a hand clap today. Amen. Somebody shout, well done. Come on, shout it again, well done. Now I need you to shout it in faith over your situation. Somebody say, well done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well done. Well done. We speak it in faith today. Hallelujah. That every man steps up to be what God has called him to be. Amen. I cannot close out this service today. If there's somebody here who does not know the Lord, amen. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, amen, and you're trying to figure out which way to go, Amen. There's only one way to go, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you want the directions, the right directions of life, amen, you got to have God on the inside and allow him to be the biggest influence in your life. Amen. And if I'm talking to you today, amen, I just want you to repeat this prayer with me. Maybe you're here in the building. You might be online today. Man, but I don't want you to miss this opportunity because it's a precious moment that can change the rest of your life if you allow it to. I just want you to repeat this prayer and mean it when you say it. Say, Lord God, I come to you today just as I am, asking you to forgive me for all of my sins. Point me in the right direction. Help me to be what you have called me to be. I thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins and all of my shortcomings and empowering me to forgive those who trespassed against me. I will live for you with the help of the Holy Ghost for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him a praise right now.